Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Alex. I'm a Google developer expert for Firebase and I'm going to show you in this video how to authenticate to Firebase using email and password in Jetpack Compose. This is a video for an article that I wrote. Link is in the description below, which was recently published on the Firebase developer official publication on Medium. So let's begin. First of all, I'm creating this video because I was inspired of this episode from the series Better Safe Than Story where Peter Fries and Rachel Myers talked about the fact that Firebase authentication is really easy to implement. And I agree with that, but it becomes harder when you want to do it well. So I decided to create a project in which I will show you the entire authentication mechanism with email and password using Jetpack Compose. So stay with me until the end. Before going forward, I want to let you know that there are two other resources available, one that explains how to authenticate to Firebase using Google One Tap and the other one that explains how to implement Firebase Anonymous authentication. Both are using Jetpack Compose. But what does this application do? It basically provides almost everything you need for a user to sign up and sign in, send the verification email, write user data in Firestore, recover password, sign out or even revoke access. Why would you do that? It's true that there are some third-party libraries like the Firebase UI which provides a simple way of implementing the Firebase authentication with different providers including email and passwords, but when we write our own code we have full control over the entire authentication process. Besides that, it's really easy to get started. Now let's take a look at our application. I have already started my emulator and as you can see we are in the sign-in screen. Since we are new and we don't have an account yet, we need to create one. So now we need to go to the sign up page. I'll try to write my email and I'll try to set a password. We have this option here to reveal the password or hide it. And now let's sign up. We sent an email with the link to verify the email. Let's open our email and see if we get one. So we can click on the URL that comes in our email and as you can see the email has been verified. Don't forget to check the spam section if you don't get the email right inside your inbox. Now let's get back to our application and since we already verified our email we can click this button. And since the email is verified we are redirected to our profile page. Now we can simply sign out. What I want to show you is if when we signed up for the first time, a cloud function is triggered that wrote some data in our Firestore. We have only two fields created that and an email. The second operation that took place was to create the account inside the authentication. So as you can see, here is the account. On the other hand, if we go back to our application and we sign in, we can revoke the access. That means that when you delete the Firebase user object, the cloud function fires and deletes the user from Firestore. So let's try this, revoke the access, which is said, your access has been revoked. If you refresh this, the account is gone. The same thing inside Firestore. Now, if you read some of my articles, you already know that my preferred architecture partner is MVVM. So I'll build this app using it. We'll use Hilt for Android for dependency injection, view model for having a clean architecture app. For the asynchronous call to Firebase, you'll use Kotlin coroutine and asynchronous flow. Before writing some code, please make sure you have added these dependencies inside your build Gradle files. I'll close these files and now let me show you how this application is made. Now let's understand the authentication flow. Since we're creating a very simple app, we'll only be using five screens. Let me open up the navigation package and open this screen. As you can see, there are only five screens available. 
since we're talking about authentication, we'll have to implement a mechanism so we can redirect the user to the corresponding screen according to the authentication state. If the user is authenticated, we redirect it to the sign-in screen. Otherwise, we redirect it to the profile screen. If the user is authenticated but did not verify the email, then we'll have to redirect the user to the email screen. So all the logic to the redirecting the users is added inside the main activity. Going forward, I would like to show you the nav graph where we have added all our composable functions. Let's open the domain layer and see the repository. Since all Firebase calls are performed in the repository, I have created a different method for each operation we perform. Now, all the implementations are present inside the auth repository implementation class. As you can see, we have a different method for each operation we perform. The last method in the class is responsible for the auth state. The on auth state change is called when the user authentication state changes. So when a user goes from not being signed in to being signed in or vice versa. So each time the auth state changes, we stay in the new state using callback flow. Now let's go forward and see the other packages. We have a components package where we have a few common composable like an email field, like a password field, like a progress bar and so on. Let's go ahead and open the app module file where we inject a single instance of the Firebase auth inside our auth repository implementation class by sending this object directly to the constructor. Inside the domain, we have another package called model where we find a simple class called response. Getting back to the cloud function, let me show you guys the code that is responsible for adding or deleting the user from Firestore. Both operations can be performed on the client, but it's better to add the business logic inside the trusted environment that you control. Remember that all access to Firestore are coming from a backend SDK will bypass security rules entirely. So when it comes to client SDK, don't forget to write the proper rules. When it comes when it comes to sending verification emails, Cloud Function doesn't help. We have to perform this operation on the client. So that's the reason why the send email verification method is present in client's code. There is however a benefit, we don't need to do anything in order to send emails. The Firebase platform will send the email for us. As said before, if for example you don't receive a verification reset password email, make sure to check the spam folder too. By the time I'm writing this article, I know there is an open issue present. So knowing that not everybody receives the email, there is one more thing that you should take into consideration, which is to perform periodic cleanups for unverified accounts. Furthermore, since email verification happens out of the band, when we click the client in the email, there is nothing built in that triggers Firebase authentication client to be updated. So there is no callback for that. Firebase only refreshes the ID token once per hour. This means that it may take up to an hour before the token is refreshed, a case in which the on ID token token change method fires. So the on auth stage change nor than on ID token change fires when the link is clicked, which basically means that we have to check that in our application code on demand by clicking reload or when the user opens the app. As soon as you verify the account, you will be able to further navigate to the profile screen as you already seen. Now let's go further to our presentation layer in which I have added a separate package for each screen we have. So we have a forgot password screen, a profile screen, a sign in screen, a sign up screen and a verify email screen. I'm not going to stay and explain each composable function or each screen in detail, but I assure you that all the screens that are present here are just simple composable functions that contain top app bars, text fields, buttons and text. So you can check all these functions inside the repo on GitHub. So that's the simplest solution for handling Firebase authentication with email and password using a clean architecture with Jetpack Compose. I hope you find this video useful and if you have any questions regarding this topic, feel free and leave a comment in the section below. So in the end guys, you can check the entire article on Medium. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. But if you think you learn something new, please subscribe to my channel because more videos are coming. Bye.